All right, just the guy I need to talk to. Liberty City, the worst place in America, flaunts its motto like a badge, representing years of organized crime and neighborhood-destroying turf wars. The town's offensiveness only seems to get worse after each generation, as the scum of society continually walks and dies on these streets. With the recent terrorist threat cutting the island off from the mainland, it might be time for anyone considering living there to think twice, maybe three times, before making a big mistake. The first notable uprising occurred in 1997 when a gang of gun-toting misfits started running errands for the Versati and Sanetti gangs. Thugs known only as Bubba, Divine, Katie, Kivlov, Mickey, Travis, Troy and Ulrika began a rampage that even carried over to other zip codes like Vice City and San Andreas. Picking up weapons wherever they could find them and stealing cars seemingly at random, the city was caught in a grip of fear as the streets ran wild with blood and bullets. <laughs> In 1998, the well-known Leone family associate, Tony Cipriani, came home after allegedly killing a made man. You're very important to me. Did I ever tell you that? Soon after his return, another rant of violence was sparked as several men tied to Salvatore Leone and his organization vanished or turned up dead. Remember, there's a hierarchy here. Capiche? Now be a good kid! Vincenzo Sili, who worked directly underneath Leone, was found dead inside a cargo freighter. And Joseph Daniel O'Toole, otherwise known as JD, who owned Polly's Review Bar before it became the Sex Club 7, disappeared after it was rumored he was to be made into the Leone family. Obviously, that never happened. Salvatore's ambition to become the top don of Liberty City put him in direct competition with the Sicilian Mafia, along with the Ferrelli and Sindaco families. This presumably led to the demise of Massimo Torini, who kidnapped the newly elected mayor, Miles O'Donovan. It's rumored that Salvatore had a hand in the mayor's rescue, thus putting the politician snugly in Leone's pocket. Uh, the, uh, city is, uh, grateful to you? Ow! Try again. O'Donovan replaced Mayor Roger C. Hole, who was murdered in broad daylight while jogging through Belleville Park. While never caught or charged, Tony Cipriani was spotted fleeing the scene. <laughs> Cipriani was also implicated in the murder of Liberty Tree reporter Ned Burner, Vice City tycoon Avery Carrington, and Yakuza crime boss Kazuki Kaysen. This is the big tough gangster? Kazuki's wife, Toshiko, may have instigated the string of attacks on her husband's organization, but her suicide hours after his death made it impossible to verify. The meteoric rise of media mogul Donald Love is also believed to have occurred thanks to the blood-soaked hands of Mr. Cipriani. I can't believe the sacrifices I've made for this town. As well as the corrupt beginnings of LCPD detectives Leon McCaffrey and Ray Machowski. I keep the law off your back, the feds, Rico, and you keep me in the shit that I like. Cipriani has somehow miraculously evaded arrest since Salvatore took control, despite being connected to the catastrophic explosion that leveled the Little Italy district of northern Staunton Island. And the in-family fighting between Salvatore and his uncle ceased. But in a city this corrupt, things normally don't stay quiet for long. In 2001, a bank robbery backstabbing led to the incarceration of a gangster named Claude Speed. His lover, Catalina, double-crossed him during the escape and then aligned herself with a Colombian cartel. Salvatore has become a dangerous and paranoid. He expects everybody and everything. And with loyalty like yours, what has he possibly got to worry about? The couple originally met in 1992 while living in San Andreas, the same city Catalina's cousin, Cesar Valpondo, calls home. 
before moving to Liberty City, the two engaged in underground racing and real estate schemes. Claude's voice has never been recorded on tape, and no one claims to have ever heard the man speak. Claude became incredibly lucky when his police transport was hijacked while crossing the Callahan Bridge. Colombian attackers bombed the bridge in an attempt to kidnap a mysterious Asian gentleman. On the run, Claude befriended a bomb expert named Eight Ball, who worked out of an auto yard in northeast Portland. As a wanted man, Claude could have easily skipped town, but instead began working for Luigi the Snake Godarelli, owner of the establishment previously run by J.D. O'Toole. Remember, this is your foot in the door. This relationship helped introduce the silent thug to Salvatore Leone's son, Joey, the infamous Tony Cipriani, and the Don himself. I see nothing but good things for you, my boy. To stay armed for a string of as yet unconfirmed violent crimes, Claude sought the services of one-armed Vietnam vet Phil Cassidy, who owns the fully cocked gun shop and has been linked to criminal activity as far as Vice City. Claude used these armaments to provoke a wave of anarchy between several warring gangs, including the Jamaican Yardies run by King Courtney, the Red Jacks run by D. Ice, and the Diablos, who work for San Andreas native El Burro. I started my exotic entertainment business with nothing but the sizable contents of my leather pants. Claude's association with the Leone family stopped abruptly when Salvatore was shot down while exiting Luigi's Sex Club 7 by an unknown assailant. Salvatore's wife, Maria Latore, was the prime suspect in her husband's death, but she was seen with Yakuza mistress, Asuka Kaysen, where the incident occurred and was never formally charged. You're an efficient killer. I like that in a man. Ah! Asuka first came to Liberty City in 1991, and her brother, Kenji, who is the brother of Kazuki, arrived five years later. My sister speaks highly of you, though I'm yet to be convinced that a guy Jin can offer anything but disappointment. Kenji used to run a casino in Torrington, but was murdered by Colombians in an unprovoked car park shootout. To this day, the Colombians swear they were not involved. A Colombian cartel figure known only as Miguel was found dead along with the Zuka Kaysen after eyewitness reports indicated the Yakuza leader had kidnapped and tortured him. Claude Speed's former partner Catalina was implicated in this gruesome scene, but before she could be questioned, she died in a helicopter crash near Liberty Dam. The body of Salvatore's widower, Maria, was also discovered near the dam, the victim of a gunshot wound to the head. Now stop the man. Let's take it. All of the evidence against Claude Speed is circumstantial due to Detective Leon McCaffrey dying in a car explosion the same year. He took more bribes than anyone. He thinks he's going to get an honorable discharge if he turns state evidence and Ray Machowski skipping town via airplane under mysterious circumstances. Despite all of these connections, the police have yet to get Mr. Speed into custody, and today, the public enemy is still at large. In fact, all of the people being shown here have at one time or another been closely tied to some of the most brutal crimes ever committed in this city. And their whereabouts are at the time of this broadcast completely unknown. They could still be prowling the streets of Liberty City seven years later, waiting for the perfect time to bully their way to the top of the organized underworld. Those that live in Liberty City should avoid these perpetrators at all costs. And those who don't should steer clear of this lost metropolis.